Sorry about that guys, right off the hop, but what's going on guys, it's Brandon back here, and today we have another BFR, Game 6 versus the Florida Panthers, I was debating on doing two videos today, but I have work in a very short amount of time, I just got home from school, and I'm not going to have time to do two videos, so I decided why not combine the minor trades and um, the BFR into one video, so let's get right into it. So the Hawks, sorry about that again. Anyway, Game 6 versus the Florida Panthers at 7.30 p.m. on October 25th. As you saw, like, my little shock expression there. I still, I'm still looking at it strangely. The Hawks win 4-2 against Florida. They, the record goes to 4-2. Um, there you have it. They game The first game of the season, they played Colorado. They pretty much got what everyone was mostly expecting. They lose 5-2. They go into Vegas, where they're expected to lose... Again, but they only lose one nothing. They come back from two nothing down against San Jose. They come back from two nothing down against Detroit. They come back from two nothing down against Seattle. Those are three teams that people are most likely picking out of the playoffs. Florida is a is currently contending for a cup, and the Hawks did. They were up three nothing against Florida at the end of the second, and very and uh, they they kept Florida off the board for about nearly twenty five minutes. That is impressive. So they out sh Florida outshoots them thirty-one to twenty-two. They outhit Florida, however, twenty-nine to seventeen. And faceoffs won thirty-five to twenty-four for Chicago. Um, Chicago goes one for two on the power play. Florida goes zero for six. So they that that wasn't great for them. Troy Murray was in the booth tonight in place of Patrick Sharp. I guess they'll be doing. Uh, Patrick Sharp will do some. Murray will do the others when Sharp's not available. Bobrovsky saves 18 out of 21. Stalock saves 29 out of 31 as he's quickly becoming a fan favorite here in Chicago. Caleb Jones was in. Philip Ruse was out. And back to the two minor trades to get off topic for a second. There were two minor trades the Hawks did today while I was in school. Not yesterday. This was after the game. The Hawks acquired Cooper Zetch from Philadelphia in exchange for Evan Barrett. So minor league trade there. And Chicago acquires Cam Hills from Montreal in exchange for Nick Bodan. Bodan has a few games of NHL experience. Cam Hills, I can't recall if you've ever played with Montreal. The name sounds familiar. But um, Nick Bodan going to Montreal, giving them some more defensive depth. He just could not fit, fit his way into the Chicago lineup these past few years. So, and Evan Barrett, he's a good minor league player. So that's kind of just a exchange switch with Philadelphia. So nothing too big there. Those were just minor trades. Anyway, onto the game. So Lafferty had a breakaway early save, and when Lafferty had that break, if he scored that early, that would have been something. Um, and then at 1740, it's a Florida penalty to White for goaltender interference. And he basically just slew-footed Staylock. I'm not sure exactly what he was thinking. Um, the Hawks were blocking shots early, and then at 1703, it's a Chicago power play slap shot. Taylor Radish is just coming up the right wing and just slaps one right by Bobrovsky. It's his second of the year from Tyler Johnson and Kane to make it 1-0. Uh, Blackwell to Entwistle then misses. The refs are yelling at the Panthers to watch the goalie, um, goalie meaning Staylock, as they were they kept they kept getting in his crease. The Hawks were fully in control since the start at this point. Um, Bennett had a chance that was stopped. Gudis with a great defensive play ends a three on one. Kachuk hits Lafferty good. Athanasiu gets a stick in the face. I think it was from his own, either his own guy or his own. It didn't look like a high stick from the angle it was. Uh, not many whistles at all in the first. The period was flying by. Hawks had too many men, and there was no call, so they got away with with one there. And then with 22.4 seconds to go, it's a Chicago goal. His first of the year, Patrick Kane, with a snipe, gets it uh, from Athens to see you in Domi, makes it 2-0. Um, we go to the second period as the Hawks go into the second first period, go go into the first intermission up 2-0, which no one expected. They finally have a, a lead that they start with. Then it's uh, in the second at 17:49. It's this is where the penalties start for Chicago. It's a Chicago penalty to McCabe for high sticking, which would be a double minor as Lusterine did have blood. Um, Athanasiu had a good hit on Lusterine, and then uh, Bennett narrowly misses uh, with puck going through the crease. Kurishev had a near break shorthanded. Um, two Panthers then collided with each other. White missed. Lafferty was denied shorthanded. Um, Lusterine was taking a beating. He got hit a few times. Then at 13.40, it's a Chicago penalty to Lafferty for tripping, which would be killed. And then at 10.25, it's a Chicago penalty to, to Tyler Johnson for, for tripping, which would be killed. So they've been shorthanded for more of the period than they have not been for the for most of this. And then Bennett uh, does do some dangles around, but he stopped. But then at 10 minutes, it's a Chicago penalty to Dickinson as he kind of stopped it. I, thought that, I didn't think that was a good call. It was for hooking. 
which made it a 5-on-3 for 135 with the Johnson penalty still, which would be killed, and the crowd erupted when that ended. The crowd was erupting at the end of every penalty kill. Uh, Stalock comes out to play a puck, and Kara takes it uh, with a miscommunication, and then White basically had to hurdle out of the way of Stalock, so that was pretty entertaining. This is Colin White, by the way. Um, great save on Reinhardt, and Bennett was denied. Bennett had a lot of chances. Stalock was excellent saves. Hawks good defensively as well. Then at 6.06, it's a Florida penalty to Kachuk for holding the stick. Uh, Florida was frustrated. They were yelling at each other on the ice pretty clearly. Kachuk was yelling at Stalock. It was a very nasty game. There were guys yelling at each other. Um, there were scrums going on. These two teams don't play each other much, but they did not like each other tonight. Um, Taze had a good uh, play, Kane, uh, which led to Kane being denied. And at 4.02, it's a Chicago... Uh, goal from Philip Kurashev. It's a fantastic move around Bobrovsky. His second of the year from Entwistle and Caleb Jones, which makes it three nothing. Um, and that was after that was before that was after Forsling was hit on a Caleb Jones slap shot. With that, it ended up going right to Entwistle, who got it over to Kurashev. And um, he could not, he could, he. I'd imagine, I'd, I think he kept he did keep playing, but he he was clearly in pain the rest of the game. Montour then had a big hit on Caleb Jones. And then at 2.26, there's a scrum after Gudis and Bennett um, jumped Domi. So the way this happened, um, everyone was screaming at each other as well. So it was at 2.26, coincidental penalties to Domi and Gudis. Chicago's penalty to Domi, Florida penalty to Gudis. They they both get roughing, which didn't make sense because Domi was on the ground, not even resisting. And Gudis and Bennett were face-washing him in on top of him. Then, at two, so, Chicago gets the extra penalty. It's Domi getting goaltender interference. They would not go shorthanded, but the issue with that was Domi had the puck, firstly, and his legs were taken out by Gudis, who then held him back as he went going into Bobrovsky. And he basically then got jumped by Gudis and Bennett and as he's trying to apologize to Bobrovsky. And then he went again at the end of the period, showing what a class player Domi is, and not like his father Ty Domi, who was one of the most classless players. But he was entertaining, that's for sure. But that was just beyond awful. I don't know what the officials were thinking there. Um, then Tyler Johnson was hurt as he was taken down. There was no penalty. I didn't see him return to the game. He might have had a small shift or so, but it looked painful. He was, he was clearly in pain. Lafferty had a breakaway that missed the net. Domi was denied, Athanasiu was denied, much more back and forth on the third. Cousins to Hornquist, wide open net, and there was a sprawling save by Stalock. It was an incredible save. So, uh, Athanasiu then was cross-checked by Mahura, and there was no penalty. Barkov was denied, Lundell was stopped. Florida was missing a lot of shots, and then it was getting scrummy. And then at 8.28, it's a Florida rebound goal from for E2 Lusterainen, who's having a great start the, to the year with his third of the year from Colin White and uh, uh, Sasha Barkov, or Alexander Barkov, whichever you call him. 3-1, and it was a wide-open net, and Florida was had controlled the third to that point, and that was I was like, okay, here come the floodgates. I'm waiting for them to open. Uh, Reinhardt whipped on a chance, and then at 7-13, it's a deflection goal for Matthew Kachuk, his fourth of the season, from Montour and Verhage, which makes 3-2. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Florida's about to tie the game. And then McCabe had a huge block. Kershev was hurt but kept playing in a collision with uh, with Barkov, who just missed a shot. Then at 6.53, it's a Chicago penalty to Domi for playing the puck with a hand off the faceoff. I had never seen that before. It was a penalty, but it would be killed. And I thought, I told my dad at that point, I said, the Hucks are going to lose the game in overtime. Floor's going to score after the penalty's over. I was right about them not scoring on the penalty. I was wrong about them scoring as... That penalty is killed. Seth Jones is cross-checked from behind, so there was no call. So a lot of missed calls against Chicago tonight. The, the, the No calls went the Hawks' way, it seemed. And they still controlled for the majority of the game against a good team. Staylock, and then Florida pulls the goalie at 2-12. Staylock's mask comes up, comes off at 135. He was hit in the mouth, but was fine. Lafferty hit in the mouth with the puck. He was fine. And timeout for Florida at 48.6 seconds. And the Hawks get the puck down. Taze beats Reinhardt for the icing. He takes the puck in at 22.7 seconds. It's a Chicago empty net wraparound goal for Jonathan Taze. His second of the, or his third of the season, actually, from Dickinson to make it 4-2. So Taze and Dickinson each having pretty good years so far, respectively. Kane, hopefully, will get his goal scoring started. And Domi's also been playing pretty well. And Tyler Johnson as well. Hopefully he's, if he, hopefully he's not injured too bad if he is because he's been playing really well. Another news around the league, Chicago's moved into third in their division. What? 
Um, no no changes really here. Vancouver still hasn't won a game. Nashville still hasn't beat a team besides San Jose in the first two. Minnesota is starting to go up. Ottawa has jumped a few teams. Montreal, this division so cr- Besides Boston, who's 6-1, and one, these th- these guys are all separated by three points. Like They can change in a dime. Um, Washington and the Devils have moved past the Rangers. And, um, yeah, that's really all I have for you guys today. So a few minor trades. A good win against Florida, however. We're trying to get Berdard, and we're 4-2. and two. What's going on here? A four-game winning streak. It took us 15 games to get to four wins last year, and we're already there now. But, anyway, it was very, it was entertaining, that's for sure. It's fun to see the Hawks win, but not when you want. That's the moral of the story here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.